Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating a brick wall procedurally like this, using geometry nodes, and then a little sculpting to get the mortar in the middle of the bricks. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. You can also find me on Twitter, at Johnny Gizmo. So in this video, we're going to create a brick wall with geometry nodes and we want that brick wall to follow a curve. And then we're going to control the rotation of the bricks procedurally so that we can make this look the way we want it to. So to create a brick wall, the first thing we're going to need is a brick. Now modeling a brick isn't what this video is about, so I'm just going to model one up here real quick. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. Next, if you've watched any of my tessellation videos, you'll know that we'll want some kind of grid to lay out our objects. So I'm gonna create a grid mesh. I'll rotate it on its x-axis and move it into place. The default grid has a 10 by 10 spacing, so this will create our brick wall of 10 bricks wide and 10 bricks tall. Now we'll quickly add our geometry node setup to tessellate our bricks. At this point, our bricks have been placed on each vertex of the grid. One thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here real quick is go ahead and select both my brick and my grid and apply rotation and also scale. This will help us out later. Now editing my grid, I can go ahead and space out my bricks to where I want them. And then I can also space them out in the Z direction. And finally, I'll move them back down to lay on the ground line. getting there. I'm going to compress this just a little more. Now one thing you'll notice, if you ever built a brick wall in this regard, you'd probably be in big trouble. Every other layer of the bricks need to be offset. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alt clicking will select a row and then shift alt clicking will help me select additional rows. Grabbing these, pressing G, and then middle mouse clicking, I'm going to constrain my movement to the x-axis until I get these bricks lined up the way I'd like. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to select my original brick and I'm going to hide it for now to get it out of the way. Now this is a start, but we can take this a lot further. The next thing I want to do is make my wall curved. I'm going to do that using a curve modifier on my grid object. So first I'll add a curve and I'm going to add a path. Now that I have a curve created, I'm going to add a curve modifier to my grid object and make sure it's first in the modifier stack. I'll point the curve object to the curve I created. Now you'll notice that the wall gets shifted over and this is just due to the way that curves interact with objects when they're set as modifiers. So we're going to grab our grid object and move it back over to align with our curve. Now, in this current version of geometry nodes, when you instance objects without a point distribute node, the instance objects do not inherit the rotation of the surface they're instanced onto. All of the rotations are zero. So we're going to have to find a way to rotate them into place manually. One way I've discovered to do this is using a blend texture with a color ramp so that we can control the points along the length of this object. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a blend texture. So we'll go to our texture tab, hit new and change the type to blend. Also under the color section, go ahead and enable color ramp. We'll use this later. 
back in our geometry node tree, we're going to add an attribute sample texture node and point it to our newly created blend texture. We'll use the UV map of our grid as the mapping for our blend texture, and we're going to put the result in a new attribute called rot for rotation. The next thing we're going to want to do is add a point rotate node. We'll set the type to axis angle and change our angle to use an attribute. By default, the axis rotation is set to 0, 0, 1 for the axis. That means the value we put in here will affect the x-axis by 0, the y-axis by 0, and the z-axis by 1. So we'll go ahead and put rot in here for our angle. As you can see immediately, the bricks have changed their rotation. And while this isn't what we're looking for, it's at least a step in the right direction. One of the issues we're going to have to deal with is that the blend texture creates values of 0 to 1. The black part of the texture being 0, the white part being 1. Now as a quick explanation, this is the object with zero rotation on it. If I add a positive rotation to this object, it will start spinning in this direction. The rotations use radians instead of degrees. And in radian rotations, it takes 2 pi radians to fully rotate an object. That means to halfway rotate an object, takes pi radians. Since our blend node is outputting a value of 0 to 1, 0 will be where this is rotated now, and 1 is going to be somewhere around here. That's not going to be very helpful. So we're going to need to amplify this value that's coming from the blend texture to get it large enough to get this object to rotate all the way around. We can do that by multiplying the output of our blend texture by 2 pi. Now 2 pi has another name called tau, spelled T-A-U. This is the value of 2 times pi. So we could multiply the value of the blend texture by tau, and that would mean if the blend texture is 0, we would have 0 rotation. If it's 0.5, we would have pi rotation. And if it's 1, we would have 2 pi rotations, or tau rotation, a full rotation. However, as I thought about using the blend texture to control the angle of my bricks, I decided that I wanted control in either direction. So I wanted negative control and positive control. So my thought was this. This is my base at zero to be able to rotate negative pi in this direction, or positive pi in this direction. So to do that, we simply need to map our values of 0 to 1 to negative pi to positive pi. So the easiest way to do that is to take our value of 0 to 1 and multiply it by 2 pi. That will make our blend go from 0 to 2 pi. Then if we subtract pi from that result, we end up with negative pi to positive pi, which is what we're looking for. And so in this instance, a value of 0 gives us negative pi, and a value of 1 gives us pi, and a value of 0.5 will give us 0. That's exactly what we're looking for. So how do we do this with our nodes? What I'll do is I'm going to add in an attribute math node. And I'm going to change the type to multiply add. We're going to take our rot attribute and multiply it by a float. So the first thing we did here was take our blend, which is our rot attribute, and we multiplied it by 2 pi. Well, 2 pi, as we saw before, is tau. So we can just enter tau. Then we subtracted pi from both of these. So in C, we can change this to a float, and we want to add negative pi, which is the same as subtracting pi. And then we will put all of that back in our rot attribute. As you'll notice, our rotations have changed again, but now it's because our values are actually controlling the bricks the way we want them to. So let's jump over to our color ramp. In the blend texture, expand the color ramp section. 
I'm going to adjust the starting and ending color stops and make them both a value of 0.5. You can now see our bricks are back to the way they were before, all at zero rotation, which makes sense because our values along this color ramp are now 0.5 for the whole color ramp. 0.5, as we remember from our equation, is giving us zero rotation. We can now start to look at how we want to rotate these. These first bricks are lined up pretty much the way we want them to be, but here they need to start going backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a color stop and move it to about a third of the way through my color ramp. I'm gonna adjust the color, and with my mouse on the value slider, I'm going to raise it from, from 0.5. I'll add another color stop and put it right in the middle. And I'm gonna set this one to 0.5. I'll add a, another color stop and put it about two thirds of the way through and I'm gonna lower this one until I get what I'm looking for. And now here you see I've got a pretty good curved wall going on. Another quick thought on a way to make this even better is to add mortar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an object that follows the basic shape of this wall. Now that I have this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and go into sculpting mode, and I'm gonna remesh this object. Now with the brush of your choice, I'm gonna go with clay strips. You can start working this back into the bricks. One last thing we can do to add just a little more randomness into our model is add an attribute randomize node to our points. We'll take the float that is currently in the rot before we use it to rotate our model and then instead of replacing or creating that value we're going to go ahead and multiply and if we set both of these to one that means that it's going to create a value between 1 and 1, which will obviously only be 1, and it will multiply that by each rotation, so nothing will happen. However, if we tweak these just slightly, we'll get just a hair more randomness in our rotations, just so it makes it that much better. And so there you have it. Curved brick wall with the bricks following the curve of the wall with some mortar in the middle of the bricks. I hope you've gotten some ideas from this video. I'd love to see what kind of results you're getting. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like. If you're finding the content of this channel helpful, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.